Hey, you. You're finally awake. You're trying to make some AI-generated art, right? I'm Jen. In the fourth installment of this Stable Diffusion How-To series, we'll be spending our time with the InPaint tool inside the Image to Image tab. We will learn about masking, mask content, blurring, and where to find color matching correction settings. First, let's use Git to see if there are any updates in the GitHub repository. You should just get into the habit of doing this step before you start playing. Right click anywhere inside the Stable Diffusion folder and click Get Bash Here. Type Git Pull in the command prompt box and press Enter. The updates will be listed above or you'll see the message already up to date. Close it out and open Stable Diffusion. If you have a picture in the text to image or in the image to image tab that you have generated, just click the send to inpaint button underneath the picture. Otherwise, click on inpaint and browse to and select an image you want to use. Now that there's an image loaded, let's look at the masking draw tool. Select the pen in the upper right hand corner of the image to set the size of the draw mask tool. Then draw on top of the picture any area that you want to change. The mask blur slider will scale the precision of the edge of the mask tool. The higher the value on the scale, the more feathering is added to the edge. Add a prompt and click generate. You'll see something else generated inside your masked area while the unmasked area stays the same. The inpaint not masked radio button will select the inverse. Let's click it now and see what happens. This is interesting, but not what I was looking for. I'll go back and select InPaint Mask for now and click Generate again. I like this one, so I'm going to click the Send to InPaint button for further shaping. Now let's examine the Mask Fill options. The Mask Content determines which content gets placed in the mask region before the prompt is inpainted. The Fill option fills in the masked area as if it were a new prompted image. The original option should improve the detail in the masked region. As we can see here, it fills in from the underlying original picture. Light and noise fills that region with lots of static and then works backward towards your prompt. Late and nothing strives to do the opposite and gives you a neutral nothing to start from and then works towards your prompt. If you're not seeing what you expected, you'll probably need to adjust the denoising scale slider. Try high or low values. Another setting that can be changed to alter the output with the mask content is located in the Settings tab under the Stable Diffusion section. It's currently labeled Apply Color Correcting to Image to Image Results to Match Original Colors. Try turning this on or off. This knowledge will be helpful to remember when we start working with outpainting scripts in a future video. Finally, when I'm working in a detailed area such as fingers on a hand, I check the box for inpainting at full resolution. This will zoom into the masked area while it's generating. In this video, we learned about pulling an update using Git, the differences between latent noise and latent nothing in the mask content section, inpainting at full resolution, masking, blurring, and color correction. That's a lot. I hope it was useful for you. In our next video, we'll set up textual inversion to train an additional subject to the model.